to tap into heaven, how to break through with the blood, with the word, with our worship, and knowing who we are in Christ. Amen? Woo! I'm telling you, with all the stuff that's going on, it's like this warring thing rises up in you. And it's like, oh no, devil, not on my watch. And see, the Lord is saying to all of us, we have to come up to a whole nother level in prayer. We can't stay the way we're at right now. None of us. I'm talking about me as well. And so when I saw this picture, Reyes, put this picture up, please. Uh, get that picture up there. And I'm going to talk a little bit about it. Listen to this. That was, that's posted in New York City. And look at what it says. Welcome to hell. Okay? And it's Diablo, and it's a video game that they're presenting to, of course, our young adults, right? And, uh, whoo, Lord Jesus. When you look up anything, KFC, Kentucky Fried Chicken, believe it or not, it's promoting this. And, all right, so I'm going to talk about this, but look, we have the, the transvestites. We have... Uh, and listen, God loves them all, so hear my heart. But I'm sorry, we have to speak the truth in love because they're on their way to hell, all right? And so here they need freedom. They're searching. And then and, and the community that's, that's going after our kids, I'm sorry. They're four and five years old. And when we're going to just say back, well, what are you going to do? No, we pray and we take a stand. And so anyway, so then I thought, welcome to hell? This is, this is in the, the spirit realm. This is what's coming out in the natural, what the enemy's trying to promote, all right? So when I looked it up, the KFC website promotes, it's promoting this Dia Diablo, and it's a video game, all right? And uh, you're supposed to fight this demon. So you're supposed to take out the enemy, but you can't fight demons with demons, <laughs> okay? And so some of the names here that you're gonna, they would fight would be bar Barbarian, Druid, Necromancy, Rogue, and Sorcerer. Lilith is involved in this. And Lilith, when you look up in Isaiah 34 or Isaiah 60-something, it's a screech owl. It's a night spectator. Listen to this. It's a female goddess known as a night demon who haunts desolate places. Lilith was believed to have special evil powers over children and infants. How, how, what a surprise. See, the enemy is going after this generation. And it, you know, it's like, oh, you know, we're in a situation right now where God is saying, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? We can't fight evil with evil. Deuteronomy 18, 18 verse 9, I, and I wrote it out in the ESV. I, I, didn't, I didn't give it to the, the, you know, the thing up here. I'm going to read it. When you come into the land that the Lord is giving you, you shall not learn to follow the abominable, abominable practices of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone who burns his son or his daughter as an offering, anyone who practices divination or tells fortunes or interprets omens or a sorcerer or a charmer or a medium or a necromancer or one who inquires of the dead. For whoever does these things is an abomination to the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord your God is driving them out before you. You see, listen. This is what the enemy, and we as parents have to be aware, this is a video game that's out there that, that KFC is promoting. We say no to that in Jesus' name. We say no to what Target has been promoting. We say no to what, you know, all the other things that are out there that's trying to get these kids sexualized at four and five years of age. I mean, what does that have to do with anything? And so let them be kids, for heaven's sake. So anyway, we have to be that mouthpiece right? And we also have to pray because when we learn the authority that we truly have and when we're warring and we're in that place and we get and understand the power that we have, God has called us to take dominion, to, to drive out the forces. We got to get back to the old of, of like when the apostles turned the world upside down. Right? So we have to increase and say, okay, you know, like even the Lord said to me, what are the practical disciplines? P tongues. We, we did a, a, a prayer thing uh, a couple years back for nine months, I think it was, where everybody prayed in tongues for an hour on the call. 
Do you know what that did for everybody? These are tools that God has given us, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that today. Anyway, but the good news is, in Isaiah 43, 16 and 9, I have a lot of good news today. It says, I am the Lord who opens the way through the waters, makes a dry path through the sea. I call forth the mighty army of e Egypt, and with all its chariots and horses, I drew them beneath the waves, and they drowned, and their lives snuffed out like a smoldering candle wick. But forget all that. It is nothing compared to what I am going to do today, says God. For I am about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness, and I will create rivers and dry wasteland. See, that's his promise to all of us. All right? So I'm not, I mean, you know, the devil's a devil, but by the way, he's defeated right? However, he's given us promises that we need to stand on and that we recognize, wait a second now, devil, not on my watch. And we say in Jesus' name, dry up. And so the Bible says God is looking for people who will stand in the gap, right? And so um, in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, and I know we're familiar with this, and then I'll get into my message. This is all this morning. It was just aggravating me. If my people who are called by my name what? Shall humble themselves. we got to humble ourselves. We need to pray. We need to seek my, his face. Turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. God is, this isn't just a scripture that we say. He means it. Right? And so we, we know that we are crying out. And, and, and you know, the, the Lord spoke to me. And the whole message today is going to be about awakening prayer. Because the Holy Spirit said to me, I am releasing a mantle of prayer back on my church again. Where I'm telling you the prayer meetings are going to be busier than a prophetic conference. People are going to come out because, you know, our flesh hates prayer. We don't like prayer it can you know but but when you engage there's that supernatural encounter with holy spirit when you're praying in the spirit and you're worshiping and you allow yourself to come to a different place get your mind off your stuff if you're complaining more than you're praying then you got a problem and that's why you're not seeing results all right so we need to to engage here so listen there's a book that uh, someone gave me a while ago many years ago actually by wesley duell or something like that and and his, he said in his book, victory depends on the warrior spirit. You cannot be God's person with anything less than a warring, militant spirit of prayer. And so that's what I'm going to talk about today. So Jesus came to equip the earth, and he came to, uh, for us to overcome the enemy. He said, I've come that you might have life more abundantly. But he's, he also said, I, I, you know, he's manifesting himself in a way so that we will destroy the works of the enemy. Amen? That's all of us. That's not a certain few. And so I think, uh, you, you, do we have the, uh, okay. So in 1 John 3, 8, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested to destroy the works of the enemy. I'm going to just read a couple of scriptures at first, all right? And James 4, 7. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee. And that word resist means to oppose him, to set oneself against and to withstand. You know, I know we know these scriptures. 1 Timothy 6.12 says, fight the good fight of faith. What's a good fight? One that you win, right? Uh, put on the full armor of God. In Matthew 11.12, it says, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the, violence, the violent take it by force. So we know that we're not fighting flesh and blood. And I, I don't know, I can't remember if I gave it to you to um, put 2 Corinthians 10, 3, and 5 up there in the Passion. But for, listen to this. It says, oh, I did. Okay. For although we live in the natural realm, we don't wage a military campaign employing human weapons, using manipulation to achieve our aims. Instead, our spiritual weapons are energized with divine power to effectively dismantle the defenses behind which people hide. We can demolish every deceptive fantasy that opposes God and break through every arrogant attitude that is raised up in defiance of the true knowledge of God. We capture like prisoners of war, hear me, every thought and insist that it bow in obedience to the anointed one. I love that. We capture, see, it's the thought process that the enemy just has us ruminate and go over and over and over. And he's saying, listen, you capture it. 
You insisted bows to the word, to the, uh, you know, where the word of God has final say. And so the natural weapons aren't capable of penetrating the spirit realm. It can't. That's why, you know, the enemy knows he's defeated. He knows he lost. He knows he's under our feet. But what is he going to do? He's going to have you have a, like my mother would say to me, a attitude. Your attitude, it stinks, she would always say to me. I had, a, I had a shift. And so, you know, he would, you know, like our pride, the arrogance, or, or just things like that, or, or just the negative that, that this is never going to happen. I haven't seen results. Uh, you know, God's not answering my prayer. Who do you think is putting you up to that? That's where, again, we got to get back. You know, the Lord years ago gave me a word, and he said, the famine of the word is over. And I prophesy that, that it's over, that you have a hunger and you have a thirst for the word unlike any time, anything you've ever done, that you put the word first before anything else, not your opinion, the word of God. What is the word saying about your situation? The only thing that turned my life around when I was such a mess, when I got saved, was the word of God. And that's a thing most people don't read. I'm not talking about Jesus calling. I'm talking about reading the word of God. And nothing wrong with Jesus calling. But if you're not reading your word, if you're not studying the word, what is going to hold you? What is going to enable you to break through when you're going through your hard time? Because you will. The Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous. He says, but I deliver you out of them all. Right? So God is pouring out an increased level of his anointing in prayer. And I want to encourage you to pray in the Spirit. To pray in the Spirit every day. Increase that time. And then wait on the Lord. Hear what the, the revelation of God is saying. Listen, we've got to be that militant people. You say, you know, the world's saying, oh, but you walk in love. Yeah, the love is speaking truth in love. That's the love of God. It's, it's the people, listen, the people, as you know, aren't our enemy. God loves them, every one of them. It's just that, Lord, we've got, when, how many of us here are born again? We're born again, right? We're coming to church not because we don't have anything to do today, but because God turned our life around, right? God turned our life. Hey, listen, the enemy's plan is to get you bored, to get you think there's a bunch of baloney, to let you think like, oh, please, these people are fanatic. Thank you if you say that about me. You know, that we're fanatic, yeah. That's right. It's either you're hot or you're cold. Because if you're lukewarm, you get a messed up, stinking life that doesn't do anything for you. It's either you're hot or you're cold. It's hot is where the passion of God is. I'm not mad at anybody. I just get like, woo! <laughs> so it's just like, oh, my God. It just aggravates me because, listen, I know what Jesus did for me. I know what he wants to do for all of us. Just because you go through hard times doesn't mean God isn't on your side and God isn't working. But he's saying, listen, I want you to be the supernatural people I've called you to be. So what's our secret weapon? He's releasing a powerful end-time prayer anointing. Listen, we can't be putting other things ahead of prayer in our time with God. And I don't care if you do it in the morning, at night, if you do it on a walk, but do it. Pray. But you know what? Like a lot of people are saying, and I'm not putting you down. Oh, I just pray in the car. Listen, you're distracted in the car. Come on. Let, let's set that time aside and spend some time with him where it's you and him focused. Amen? So we have never seen what we're seeing now. I mean, God is saying, listen, I've given you authority to overthrow the altars of Baal. I've given you authority to overthrow the altars of abortion. I've given you that authority to overthrow, you know, all the sexual immorality nonsense that's out there. The media, right? The people there are presenting something that makes it look so wonderful. And they're all having sex. They're all, you know, out there doing their thing. They're all, like, half naked. That's not the spirit of the Lord. And you say, well, that's religious. No, it's not. That's sin. And we need to call sin for what it is. It's sin. And, and you tell me one happy person that's been from partner to partner to partner to partner with all their 4,000 soul ties that they get after that. See, it's not, see, the Lord says no to these things, not to hurt you, but to protect us. And he, you know, listen, we're going to pray today. We're going to repent because God is saying, I love you too much to let you stay where you're at. It's not okay. 
And, you know, like, I know, you know, like, as a young person, you know, teenager, you're thinking, oh, brother, here they go again. I remember being in Patterson, seeing these people. And I was turned off because, you know, they didn't wear makeup. They had these white kerchiefs on their head, and they'd be, you know, you know, wanting to give you a track and talk about Jesus. Well, I'm like, I'm, ugh, I don't want to hear about that. We have to be relevant and, and make sense to the people. That was a religious concept. They were trying to establish a purity, but they were doing, going about it in all the wrong way. It was all focused on, you know, you got to look like this. You have to act like this. God is saying, listen, give me your heart today. Give me your heart. Because, listen, you may not, think, hopefully not in sexual immorality, but maybe you have unforgiveness. Maybe you're in doubt and unbelief. Maybe you have a hard heart that God wants to, you know, uh, break up. So we can't be ignorant of the schemes of the devil, all right? And, you know, sometimes you don't realize you're asleep until you wake up, <laughs> right? And so I was like, Lord, please wake me up in every area, every area of my life that allow me to be awakened. I don't want to be indifferent. I don't want to be complacent. I don't want to be passive. Because, listen, you can go through the motions and not be on fire for Jesus. And to me, that's the best way to be, you know. In Matthew 13, 25, I don't know if I put it up there. Um, Jesus revealed that while men slept, it, it, the enemy came in and sowed tares among the wheat. When you are asleep, there's a problem here. And so in 2, Tim, 2 Samuel 1, in the New Living Translation, it says, Oh, how the mighty have fallen. Listen, stripped of their weapons, they lie dead. Now, I'm going to tell you something. The enemy has tried to strip the church of their weapons. Worship, oh, you're too long, you're too fanatical. Oh, my God, they're too loud. Oh, my God, you know, these people are praying in tongues, they're so loud. Yeah, hello. God has given us weaponry, and it doesn't mean you have to be a screaming Mimi. It means that you know who you are in Christ, but he's given us, we, you know, we were listening to Kim, o Kim Owens last night. Oh, my God, that lady is amazing. But there's a shout that we have, right? There's an anointing in all of us. And, and let me put it to you this way. When you see somebody trespassing on your property, what are you going to do? Oh, well, what am I going to do? You're going to get off my property. I see the people even trying to walk their dogs. And I look, I sound like my mother. Like, hey, hey, you cleaning up after yourself? Get off my property. Well, how are we any different then when the enemy's trying to trespass on us and he's releasing his poopy mess on us, we have to say, absolutely not, not on my watch. You're not having, you heard the song, you're not having my family, you're not having my increase, you're not having my life, you're not having my mind. It's like you have to get angry with the enemy and say enough is enough. I'm telling you. If you're, if you're carnal and passive, we're going to pray for you today because that's a stinking life. That's not a way you serve God, and it's not a good example for him. So an unaware church is an unarmed church. Jesus came to set us free. He doesn't want us to stay stuck with, with, with demonic in our lives. He doesn't want us to stay stuck with fear. If we're battling that, we have a way of escape. God provides a way of escape for every situation we're going through. And, and you know, I, I've been through it. Not that I've arrived, but listen, I've been through spiritual war, and I have seen the power of prayer. And I just know even my own self with, with just the depression and hopelessness and, and all this other kind of stuff, God has set me free. Because, but it, listen, it takes us working. It takes us praying. It wasn't just, oh, God, let me have someone lay hands on me. I wish that were the case. Just lay hands on me and set me free. No, it's the privilege is, is having a relationship where we dialogue with him, where we're intimate, where he gives us revelation, where he gives us a prophetic word about our life and our family. I'm telling you, the enemy, one of the other things that the enemy's doing is major distraction in our lives. Distraction, our phones. Distraction, 24-7. Come on, that's idolatry. That's idolatry. If you can't keep your phone down and where you have to constantly be on it, that's a problem. You need to repent. So it's like the little things. You might say, oh, what's the big deal? Well, are you focusing on Jesus? Or is it all on, you know, let's see what's going on on uh, whatever those things are, Instagram and, and different things like that. Come on. 
Ephesians 6, 12 says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against the rulers, against powers, against world forces of this present darkness, and against spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly supernatural places. All right? So um, I'm going to talk a little bit today about Athaliah. But we have to be strategic. And I was looking up the word. I, I mean, I know we know what it means. But strategic means that which counts the most. And we must know how to face an enemy that has already been defeated. We are warring from victory. We are facing an enemy that is defeated. But, but look at the condition of a lot of things. Where are we at? And so I said, Lord, you have given us power to tread over scorpions and serpents. And I'm speaking to the church at large here. I'm just talking like the Lord said to me, I want you... To, to wait on me. I want you to hear, and I want you to increase that time. Like, I, like in, in, it's not like I'm not doing it, but I know that there's distractions and there's just different things. And I, I said, Lord, I'm going for it. And I'm really enjoying my time in, in the meditation of the word. You know, if you're not doing it, do it. Listen, I don't know what's coming, but we need to be prepared. And listen, this isn't to scare anybody. Because God is on our side, and God is for us. The Bible says, if God be for us, who can be against us, right? But we have got to know what's in the word. You have to know how to stand. The Bible says in, in Ephesians, when you've done all to stand, you stand some more. You stand. And that means you stand on the covenant promises. You know, I just have a sense that a lot of times there's a lot of anger or bitterness or resentment because there's been a waiting. There's been a process. Give it over to the Lord. I don't understand it all. I just know that he's faithful and true. I just know that he watches over his word to perform it. That's what I know. All right? And so listen to this. In Colossians 2.15 in the Passion, it says here, Jesus made a public spectacle of all the powers and principalities of darkness, stripping away from every weapon all their spiritual authority and power to accuse. And by the power of the cross, Jesus led them around as prisoners in a procession of triumph. He was not their prisoners. They were his. Amen. Amen. So you got to remember, Jesus even, it, when you read through Colossians, it says even the hand, what was written against you is erased. Amen. When you repent, God forgives you. Don't you keep bringing it up, right? I, I, you're forgiven. Now, in 1 Samuel 13, 19 through 22, this is now I'm getting into my message. It says, there was no blacksmiths in the land of Egypt, in, in Israel in those days. Listen, the Philistines wouldn't allow them for fear that they would make swords and spears for the Hebrews. So whenever the Israelites needed to sharpen their plowshares, their picks, their axes, or sickles, they had to take them to the Philistine blacksmith. Let me tell you something. This scripture here, again, the church at large where we, everybody's, you know, like we don't want to offend people. Oh, my God. The fear of the Lord. Lord, bring it on. I am not concerned about what's offending people. I am concerned about what, it, what offends my God. And the fear of the Lord, the Bible says, is the beginning of wisdom. Now, I'm not talking about being rude to people or anything like that. I'm talking about what pleases God is what pleases me. The Bible says, woe to those who call evil good and good evil. He said to hate what I hate and love what I hate. He loves the sinner, but he hates the sin. And so here, listen to this. It says, they, they see, the enemy knows what's our weapon, the blood, communion, prayer, worship, the simplicity of the gospel. He knows the power that causes breakthrough. He knows that. And that's the thing that, that the enemy comes against the most, even in our own personal lives, isn't it? And it says here, but listen to this, but whenever the Israelites needed to sharpen their plowshares, they went to the Philistine camp. I am not going to the world, the Philistines, to tell me what I need to do with my family. I am not going to the world for their advice on, on things that I know the Bible tells us that we can be set free in. That's what that whole thing is saying. They had to go and have their tools sharpened. I'm not going to let the world sharpen my spiritual tools, period. And so the enemy has crept into the church little by little to remove our weapons. 
Not too many churches have uh, run to secular leadership to sharpen their church, you know, like we go to church growth, church growth things, you know. I mean, we haven't done that, but I'm just saying, I'm not interested in that. We need to be on our faces to hear what the strategy from the Holy Spirit is. What is the Spirit of the Lord saying? See, when, when I got saved, the, the woman who mentored me was in prison for eight years. She was a madam. She gets, you know, radically saved, gets out. She was no nonsense. Because her life, she was going to die. She had people after her that wanted to take her life out. And she had to learn to get on her face and pray. And that's what she taught us, to pray and fast. And to decree the word of the Lord, to, to know who you are. And it's a, it's a progressive thing. I mean, you grow in him. It's not an instantaneous thing. But my God, sin, you can't be straddling the fence. It's not okay. What are you watching on TV? Would Jesus sit there with you to watch it? All the vulgarity of the language that's on TV, I'm sorry. That's not a, I, you know, I don't want my spirit to be tainted by that. It's offensive. But I have to tolerate that. But we can't say that if you're a homosexual, God wants to set you free, but they can say the F word left and right. Oh, come on. Now, you know, we're able to share. I mean, again, Jesus loves the people, but he came to set the captives free. Amen? And so that's what we have to understand. I'm not going to let the world, the Philistine camp, tell me how I'm going to speak and take my voice away. Not happening. And so God has given us a voice and a voice to speak the truth. Amen? Okay, so in 2 Kings, this is where... Let's spend a little time. I see the time. 2 Kings 11, in the message version, where I'm going to talk about Athaliah. It says, Athaliah was the mother of Hazai, Hazaiah, whatever his name is. And when she saw that her son was dead, she took over and she began by massacring the entire royal family. But Jehosheba, daughter of King Jehoram, sister of Azaziah, whatever his name, took him and she took Joas and she kidnapped him from among the king's sons slated for slaughter, and she hid him. See, there's a remnant that's hidden. There's a remnant that is hidden, and God is calling them out now. And it says, in his nurse in a private room away from Athaliah, there we go, a mama bear, that Jehosheba, who hid him, who knew, I'm not going to let this kid die. And he was hidden, he was away with her, hidden for six years in the temple of God. Athaliah was oblivious to his existence and ruled the country. Listen, the enemy doesn't realize what God has in store. We haven't seen anything yet. And we're not losing, we're winning. But God is saying, listen, I need your discernment to increase. I need you to be focused on me. I need you to press into me like never before. He said, because there are things that have been hidden that now the hidden revelation, I'm going to reveal and give you strategy now for what's ahead. And then it says here, and God has hidden away the end time. Well, I wrote this. God has hidden the end time army to rise up and pray and worship. Declare the word of the Lord. The Josiahs are rising. The Jehus are rising. The Phineases are rising to take out the enemy. And we have to become militant in our mindset, again, not against people, against the enemy, against his attempt to take you out and cause you not to fulfill your destiny and your purpose in life. And listen, I'm telling you, he's after the, you know, I, I, was, I saw something that somebody was saying that, you know, please, like, be careful about going to college because there's a communistic um, agenda that's there. They go in one way and come out another. You got to be careful, those of you that are going to college. You have to know in who you believe. Please don't look at me today and think that what I'm saying is a bunch of baloney, okay? Because what I'm saying here today is to save your life. We've been around. There's nothing new under the sun, okay? Nothing new under the sun. And you think, oh, they're too radical. They're too... No, honey. The devil's out to take you out. And that's just the way it is. But unless you be shrewd, unless you take a stand and you recognize, wait a minute, what my parents, what the church, what they're trying to sow into me is to make me aware of the platform, of the strategy of the enemy. Because the enemy is going to make you feel like, oh, well, I'm not fitting in with everybody. That's right. We're different. We're peculiar people. But I know it's hard. I know at that age it's hard. But I'm telling you, God will give you a strength. Don't be set up. 
So then it says here, then verse 8, then he commanded them, these are your instructions, those of you who come on duty on Sabbath and guard the palace. We need to guard our homes with a bloody sword. We need to guard our lives with a bloody sword, with the blood of Jesus. We need to guard the church. And those of you who go off duty on Sabbath and guard the temple of God are to join forces at the time of the changing of the guards and form a ring around the young king. And I wrote, and around our children. We need to form a ring around our families, around these young people that think they know more than Jesus sometimes, you know, like we did. <laughs> and so we need to form a ring of protection, a set of bloodline. But speak the truth in love. Kill anyone. It, listen, it says kill anyone who tries to break through your rings. That's how serious they were. Now, of course, we're not going to kill anybody, but we can take out the enemy. And it says here, your job is to stay with the king at all times and places, coming and going. Be alert, in other words. Be watchful, okay? And so that militant, warring spirit will guard us, guard our temple, take a stand with the fear of the Lord against the enemy. And then 9 through 11, it says, The captain obeyed the orders of Jehoiada, whatever his name is, the priest. Each took his men and those who came on duty on the Sabbath and those who went off duty on the Sabbath presented them to Jehoiada, the priest. The priests armed the officers with spears and shields originally belonging to King David. They were stored in the temple. They were there. The weapons are here. Okay, and it says they were well armed. The guards took up their assigned position for protecting the king from one end of the temple to the other, surrounding both altar and temple. Athaliah heard the shouting. Here we go with sound. The sound of worship. The sound of our praise. The sound of our, the shout. Uh, Kim Owens was referring to that. And then, Gregory, you were talking about that in prayer this morning, the sound, about the sound. We have a sound. And, and the Lord gave me a vision Thursday night uh, when we were at that meeting. And, and the Lord said that when we're walking in faith, there's a vibration, there's a sound that emits that comes off of us that the enemy sees and, and is terrified over. That's why he always tries to zap our faith. There's that sound, there's that vibration, there's that, that frequency from heaven that's in us, that, that when we're, the movement of our bodies, the movement of faith causes him to flee. So that's why he's always after our faith. And so it says here, she heard that sound of guards and people and came to the crowd gathered at the temple of God, astonished. She saw the king standing behind, beside the throne, flanked by the captains and heralds with everybody beside them with joy and trumpets blaring. Athaliah ripped her robe in dismay and shouted, treason, treason. And the priests ordered the military officers, drag her out and kill her. And it says, and, any, and, and, who, and he says, drag her outside and kill anyone who tries to follow her. The priest has said, don't kill her inside the temple of God. So they dragged her out to the palace uh, horse corral and they killed her. And the priest ordered the military officers, drag her outside and kill anyone. All right, all right, oh, sorry, I said that. All right, well, maybe we need to hear it again. Drag her outside <laughs> and kill her. See, we have to have that kind of mentality against the enemy. Again, we're not talking about human life. Get out. You're not going to have my family. You're not going to have the Josiahs, the young generation. We, God has given me a vision years ago. He said, you're raising up a military, a warring army. And it's now. Now is the time. We're it. We're it. In our prayer time, in our worship time, in our taking a stand. The enemy, you know, is an equal opportunity demon destroyer right he's after everybody he didn't care he just doesn't want you serving god you can be religious he don't care about that you can go to church 15 times a week and be religious and not have relationship not have a revelation from holy spirit that's what he wants and so it says here and jehovah uh, he made a covenant between god and the king and the people and they were god's people and the people poured into the temple of Baal and tore it down. See, it's not just take out the enemy. Now you've got to tear down the, the temple. You've got to get Baal, get rid of Baal, smashing altars and images to smithereens. They killed Matan, the priest, in front of the altar. See, we have to destroy the works of the enemy. And they stationed sentries in the temple of God. And he arranged for the officers of the bodyguard and the palace security.
security along with people themselves to escort the king from the temple of God through the gate uh, of the guards and into the palace. And there he sat on the royal throne and everybody celebrated the event. Listen, and the city was safe and undisturbed and they had killed Athaliah with the royal sword. And Joas was seven years old. Now listen, the enemy... The Athaliah, that spirit that's roaming, that's out there, it's, I'm not talking about it being in one person. It's, it's the spirit, it's the ideology that's out there that wants to take out the kids, that wants to take out really all of us and make us all look like fools. But even like the Israelites, when you study in, in, in the Exodus, it looked like they weren't going anywhere. It looked like they were going to be making those bricks without straws for a long time, be slaves, right? But God had a plan. And it was the power, it was Passover, it was the power of the blood. And then, you know, you see the Red Sea and like, oh, my God. You know, Moses is like, Lord, what did you do? Give me all these crazy people that are murmuring and complaining. And they get up to the water, and I'm sure he was freaking out. You have the Egyptians behind him. You have the Red Sea over there. Like, oh, my God, isn't that sometimes where we're at right now? My God, what are you going to do? But he's saying, have faith in me. Put your trust in me. Know that I have a way. I will make a way of escape. I will get you out of your mess, but you have to trust me. Don't quote a scripture once a week. You get out of something what you put into it. And he's telling us to be like, you know, like Daniel. I'll, I'll quote that in a minute. And then Jeremiah 1.9. Listen, we're in a decade of pay, right? What does that mean? It's a 10-year era where it's all about the mouth. And, and look at how the enemy tried to cut our mouth, our voice off for so long, right? And then even with COVID and the darn mask and, you know, we need to decree the word of the Lord. We need to know the power of the word of God. We need to recognize that when we are saying that word, that it is creating something in the realm of the spirit. You're not just quoting words. You're, you're speaking the word of God and it creates something in faith. And so Nehemiah, Jeremiah 1, 9 and 10 says, Then the Lord stretched out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, hear me. I have put my words in your mouth. I'm telling you right now, God has put his words in your mouth. I have appointed you this day over the nations and over the kingdom to uproot, break down, destroy, overthrow, to build and to plant. Listen, you may think, oh, my, I'm just going to be able to do that. Yeah, yes, you can just do that. You can do that over your family. You can do that over your neighborhood. You get a strategy from the Lord, and you decree that word, and you take a stand. All right? And so that's what God is telling us to do. He's given us power over all the works of the enemy in Matthew 10.1. So God is releasing this increased prayer anointing, and we're going to pray. But I just want to read this. I love the book of Daniel because, again, they were going through such difficult times. Daniel 3.15 says, now, if you're right, now, you know the story. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were taken captive. Now they're in Babylon, and, you know, they have, they're under King Nebuchadnezzar. And King Nebuchadnezzar thought he was a god. He actually would tell them, I am a god, and, and everybody needs to worship me, all right? And it says here, I'm going to pick it up from Daniel 3.15. Now, if you're ready, he told everybody that they had to bow and worship him. Like the world is saying, we have to worship gay pride. We have to worship, you know, uh, all the junk that's out there and all the gossip and all the nonsense that's out there. No, no, we're not. And so he said, now if you're ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, the pipe, the lyre, the trigon, I don't know what that is, harp, dulcimer, and all kinds of music to fall down and worship the image which I have made very good. But if you don't worship, you'll be thrown at once into the midst of a furnace of blazing fire. And listen to what he said, like the world says. And what God is there who can rescue you out of my hands? That's what, that's what the enemy's saying. You think your God can deliver your family? You think your God can heal you? You think your God can do that, son? I don't think, honey. I know it. And so Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego wasn't bowing. And it says here in verse 16, I'm sorry, yeah, verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we don't need to answer you on this point. And if it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to rescue us from the furnace of blazing fire, and he will rescue us from your hand, O king. But even if he doesn't, let it be known to you, O king, we're not going to serve your gods 
or worship the golden image you have set up. See, that's our position. We are not bowing. We're not going to worship your gods. We are taking a stand, period. And then in verse 23, it says, but these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that, well, let me back up. The king was pretty aggravated, right? They said, burn, the, like, put the heat up, kick it up, seven times even hotter. Listen, the world's not happy about it, and, and your family may not be happy about it. Your situation might sting, but, and it might look like it's getting worse or it's seven times hotter. But God's got a plan, and he's faithful, and he's on your side. And remember, if God be for you, who can be against you? And so then it says here, but these three, they were thrown into the midst of the fire. Even the ones that, that threw them in got burned, and they were all tied up. And it says, and Nebuchadnezzar, the king, looked and was astounded. And he jumped up and said to the counselors, didn't we throw three men who were tied into the midst of the fire? And they replied to the king, certainly, O king. He said, but he answered, he goes, look, I see four men untied walking around in the midst of the fire, and they're not hurt. And the appearance of the fourth one is like the son of God. Woo, Jesus. See, we got the fourth man in the fire, and he's with us, and he's on our side. And I love to meditate on this, because if God be for us, who can be against us? And I'm going to keep saying that. There's a fourth man in the fire with us. But listen to what King Nebuchadnezzar did. This cracks me up. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying, well, bless Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You want to get people to serve the Lord? You serve him wholeheartedly. Let them see the miracle signs and wonders working in your life, the passion in your life, the deliverance in your life. They'll shift because they're watching you. And it says here that he sent his angel. Wait, so Nebuchadnezzar said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel and delivered his servants who believed in him. Listen, I love this. Believed in, trusted in, relied on him, and they set aside the king's command and yielded their bodies rather than serve or worship any other god. Woo! Except their own. Therefore, I make a decree that any people, nation, or language that speaks anything amiss against their god shall be cut into pieces and their home shall be made a dunghill because there is no other god who can deliver this way. Amen? You can sin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to be encouraged because this is who we are. This is what God has for us. And God loves us so very much. And so I want to pray because, you know, I repented before the Lord because, you know, we get distracted, right? It doesn't mean that we're doing anything wrong. We're doing service unto the Lord. But a lot of times if we're not waiting and we're not spending that time with the Lord, and hearing, right? So I said, Lord, show me my heart. I said, I, I'm sorry for the times that I have just been distracted, right? And so again, this isn't condemning. This is say, the Lord saying, okay, let's just deal with heart issues today so that I can bring you into a whole nother place because he's commissioning us today. He's commissioning us with a, a mantle of intercession, of prayer, unlike anything we've ever experienced. Amen? So I'm going to pray. So I actually wrote stuff out so I didn't forget. So, Lord, we just come before you, Father. And we are a mighty people because we have the mind of Christ. And we have your DNA within us, oh God. And we do ask you to forgive us where our minds have been on other things other than you. Because you know the way. <laughs> you know the end from the beginning, oh God. And I ask you, Lord that you will expose any deception, any, any darkness, any even woke mentality in us. God, would you expose the works of the enemy in my life or around me or, or, or whatever. Just show me my heart, Lord. I repent, Lord, for where there's been pride in my life, where there's self-righteousness, where I've been walking in offense. I repent, Lord for doubt and unbelief. I repent for idolatry. I, I put down perversion, complacency. See, God wants to set us free. Where I have knowingly or unknowingly come into agreement with these spirits or mindsets. I repent for fear. I repent for anxiety. I repent for not trusting you, God. I repent. God, heal my heart. I, re I, I renounce trauma in my life. 
God, only you know, only you know, and only you can set me free. And forgive me from running from you. Forgive me for always being distracted. Forgive me for thinking this is even nonsense and not even set being sold out. Forgive me. And I ask you, Father, for increased discernment in my life. Would you purify me, Lord? Forgive me where I've allowed the enemy to have access. Forgive me through unbelief, through offense, through judging others, through being bitter and not forgiving. Please forgive me. Lord, every area of deception, God, expose it. I command it to be uprooted in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, help me to be vigilant. Holy Spirit, I ask for that passion. Give me a desire to meditate on your word. Forgive me for prayerlessness and forgive me for not reading your word. God, I desire you and I desire to be the man and woman that you have called me to be. Anoint my mouth, anoint my eyes, anoint my ears with your fire, oh God. The cry of my heart is for you to change and transform us, to be the people you've called us to be. Lord, just, just release your wind over any kind of weariness or disappointment right now. He, he's there. He's, he's near to the brokenhearted. I want you to know that. And Lord, we say yes to an increased level of all that you have for us. In Jesus' name, Lord, our desire is to be that warring people who, who, who walks in love, but who also knows their God, who like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego didn't bow their knee. We won't bow to the pressures of the world. Our stance will draw them to you. We will not be um, a yield to their pressures because they need you, Jesus. So give us the strength and the strategy. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we just pray, Father, for our times that we set that aside in our prayer language, praying in the Spirit and worshiping and just setting that time before you because you have such amazing things you want to reveal to your people and you're preparing us for what's ahead. So Holy Spirit, we just thank you for each and every one here. Lord, I bless them. I bless increase in the name of Jesus. Can we just pray in the spirit for a minute? Lord, even give us diverse tongues, interpretation of tongues. God, break off any lethargy off of us. Break off any passivity over your people. God, remove any scales that's over our eyes, oh God. Father, we just say, tenderize our heart, where our heart is, is flesh, is soft to, to have the word, the seed of the word, pen be penetrated. God, we repent for a hard heart. Forgive us, oh God, for the distractions and blaming everybody for our problems. We choose to all listen and obey your word. Lord, we rededicate ourselves to you this day. God, we say to you, forgive us for going through the motions of Christianity and not being sold out to you, oh God. Lord, we rededicate our lives to you. Lord, we say, let the fire on our heart be burning brightly. If it's, been, uh, if it's been dim, Lord, release your wind on that fire. He's here for us. Lord, you called us to be a people of passion, not passionless. And Lord, forgive us where we've allowed all our circumstances to consume us instead of your word, instead of your presence. Lord, I thank you that we are a militant, warring people. Your, your word says that you are a man of war. And we, we submit to your leadership, oh God. And knowing, Father, that you have called us to be that warring one that will not bow, that will not yield to the pressures that will not yield 
to the lies and the circumstances that the enemy releases against us. We say no. We set a bloodline around each of us and our family members. We say no to every demonic assignment, every lie. We squelch that. We, we say dry up that root system in Jesus' name. The Spirit of the Lord God is here to set captives free. The Spirit of the Lord God is to open up your eyes. His presence is here, says God. The Lord says, yield to Him. Yield to Him. Oh, Lord, we thank you for our voice, that you've given us a voice, and that voice is to decree the word of the Lord, oh God. That voice is to speak freedom. Lord, life and death are in the power of our tongue, and we choose life, oh God. Oh, 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 I speak to disappointment. I take authority over disappointment and hopelessness right now. Lord, we say that will not guide us. Hopelessness and despair, those lies will not lead us. Lord, your word says you're the hope of glory in our lives. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. See, we used to pray things through. We used to pray things through until we got that release. Father, forgive us for our idolatry. Forgive us where we have put other things before you, O God. We choose to put you first in our life, O God. See, the Lord's amazing love over our lives. He wants us blessed. He wants us living above and not beneath. The Bible says we're the head and not the tails. And so, Lord, we say yes to your promises. We say yes to your truth. We say yes to your lifestyle, oh God. The Lord says, come running into his arms. The Spirit of the Lord God says that his arms are open wide for you. Don't you pull back. The Lord is saying, come, run to him. His mercy endures forever. And his mercy and his love over you is amazing. He says that my love, I've loved you before you were in your mother's womb. Receive my love, says the Father. Receive my love, my love that encounters you and will overthrow every work of darkness says the Lord the Lord says that my spirit is present to heal and set you free the Lord says allow my love allow my arms allow my everlasting arms to wrap around about you says the Lord just a couple more minutes. Oh, she brose teddy at a mama. Oh, yara ma go she tay. Oh, yara ma go she bra. Oh, she teddy at a mama mama. Oh, yara. The Lord said to me right now, He's just purging you of weariness, of stress. He's just purge. He's just, he's just re like releasing that stuff off of you that's just been trying to hold you back. Just shake it off. Oh, yara ma go ro go she bra se teddy at a. Oh, yeah, my, 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 spirit of the living God, spirit of the living God, we worship you. Spirit of the living God, breathe, breathe your breath. 
We speak to the dry bones. We speak to the discouragement. We speak to the shame. We speak to the disappointment. We prophesy life. We say, you shall live. You shall live. You shall live. You shall live abundantly. You shall be healed. The Lord is decreeing restoration. We cry out to you, O God. We cry out to you, O God. We say, have mercy on us, O God. We cry out, Lord Jesus. We need you, O God. We need you, O God. God, we are following hard after you, like the deer that panted for the water brooks, oh God. We're following hard after you, oh God. That's our heart's cry. Oh, Shebra City. God, we rededicate our lives to you this day. We rededicate our lives to you this day, filled with your love and passion, that we will be in hot pursuit of you, O oh God. Lord, 
just forgive us where we've been indifferent. But we have not fallen apart after you like the deer. Lord, today, as we leave here, we choose to pant hard after you. Lord, our desire is to honor you. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, for the holy fear of the Lord that's back in your church. When we fear you, when we reverence you, when we want to honor you in our lives in every area. O yara ma 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 ma, ego shembra seteri yara ma. O yara yara ma 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 ma. I see the Lord jumping and dancing and swirling around you, like it says in Zephaniah, that He sings, He rejoices, He dances around you. The Lord says His love is here. O yara ma ma ma, O yara ma shembra. Thank you, Father, for imparting the spirit of prayer, the next level, the militant prayer over us. And let me just say this, militant doesn't just mean screaming and yelling. The scripture, and I say it often in Song of Solomon, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for his love is better than wine. That word kiss means, that intimacy, that, that revelatory time what God means to equip with weaponry. Oriyarama shabra sete, oyarama mama, oyarama, oyarama mama mama. You are not defeated, says the Lord. You are not defeated, says the Lord. You are not hopeless. You are not worthless. You are not inadequate, says the Lord. The Lord says, see yourself through my eyes. The Lord says, see yourself through my eyes. This is your turning point, the Lord says. Choose to believe my word of victory over your life. And the Lord also is saying, I mean, I'm just, he's saying, you feel like a failure even over your family. And the Lord says, don't look at that. Look at how I'm going to restore. I know the end from the beginning. That's the enemy's strategy, is to keep you looking at what's not happened yet. Lord, you're the God of all impossibility, and we thank you. And we give you the hearts that are sad and sorrowful. We yield that over to you, and we thank you that joy is our strength. Subro just I, I there's just a presence of the Lord here I just feel like we just need to honor him and just stand for a couple more minutes words that have been spoken over you, I just saw them falling off. Words that are contrary, that you may have even spoken over yourself, but contrary to the word, I just saw them falling to the ground, like, like slipping off.
See, he's refreshing you right now in this rest, in this standing still before him. God is releasing his refreshment, his refreshing wind. trust you and we thank you for what you're doing please feel free to stay up here and pray and for those who have to leave we bless you and lord we just thank you father and we say yes to your commissioning of being prayer warriors and i bless each and every one of you here in jesus name amen